Hello and welcome to Traditional Stitches Floss Tube video number 24. I'm Janice Spencer, the owner of Traditional Stitches, and with me today is our Stitch Along leader, Rose Heck. Hi, Hi Janice. Rose. <laughs> so we got a bunch of things to talk about today, but I wanted to check in with you about how your last month has gone with. You had an exciting family wedding. I did my oldest daughter finally got married and when I say finally it's been 20 years in the making so we had a nice small family wedding and yeah she's uh they're both very happy that it's behind them now because <laughs> the pandemic delayed it by at least a year if not longer so I don't think that was the only thing that delayed it so but, yes Good. And you've been camping? We started again. So in June, as everyone knows here, it rained, you know, enough to uh, do some flooding in that. And then July, I'm not sure where July went. That's, yeah, that's that shaking of the head tells you it. Yeah. We just didn't get camping. Maybe once. So now that the wedding is over, it's full steam ahead. We're camping. Good. Good. And we were talking before we started the video that I think it's hilarious that you take your cat camping. I know. I know. Your your social media pictures have the evidence of that. So <laughs> right. And I try not to put too many of the dog and cat in there, even though I think they're cute. People would probably yeah. think it's crazy. But he doesn't come hiking with us, but he does afterwards he comes out and wanders around. And if he gets too far, he gets a harness. So, hmm. yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah. Good. Well, I went to a wedding too in BC and mm -hmm. it was beautiful and perfect and very hot there. Yes. Um, but everything turned out exactly how it was supposed to. So that was, good. that was definitely the highlight. Good, good. Yeah. And that was in July or in August? That it, just happened. It, Yes, the weekend before your wedding. So. Oh, yes. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then now, all of a sudden, it's the end of August. And um, kids are going back to school, and the days are getting shorter, and I just don't really know where the summer went, although I am happier that the heat spell has broken a little bit. I have to agree with that. It doesn't make for very good sleeping and all of the other things. So I'm a 20 degree Celsius girl. So yep. that's about 70 Fahrenheit. Yep. Beyond our, that. Our fall season is coming. I'm definitely mm -hmm. a autumn girl myself. Right. So. Right. All right. So our order of operations for today is going to be to talk about our stitch alongs. Um, things going on in the shop, uh, including a parade of in-stock hand-dyed linens, if you can believe that. And we're going to talk about Expo, the upcoming Needlework Expo, and then our plans for next month. Sounds like a plan. Alrighty. So we're going to start with Eliza Martha Linfoot. So we're in the last month is starting on the 1st of September. Mm -hmm. feels so weird to say the 1st of September already. Yeah, um, it does. And so I had some messages with the um, Lynn Foot Stitch Along leader, Cherry. And so mm -hmm. she sent me the details about how people can uh, submit their photos of their finishes for the draw that happens at the end of the stitch along. So it includes her email address and contact information. So I'm going to put it in the text box underneath the video. Um, I'm just gonna copy and paste her message to me so that everybody has what they need right there. And so um, my mind is blanking on what the sampler looks like that is the antique prize from Nicola, but um, we'll, Maybe we'll be able to feature a photo of that. Uh, she's doing it in the draw in early October, so it would be into our late October video if we did that. So okay. anyways, we'll see if we can remember to do it. Okay. Otherwise, just watch the Facebook group for the last Martha Linfoot Center. I agree. So this month, everybody should be tackling this basket. 
So we promised in our last video that we're gonna give a few tips for doing the basket. And so we both finished the sampler. So we're speaking from experience and we both actually did the basket different ways. And I did see a very clever idea from Paula on the Facebook group in the last couple of days as well mm -hmm. about how to tackle the basket. And she might actually have the best idea yet. So um, you did the stem stitch, the dark brown section first, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about this basket here, right here. And so the white that you see there is satin stitch, and then the dark is the stem stitch. So you did the stem stitch first, which meant that you just had to fill in the satin stitch. That's right, Janice. I did the satin stitch first, and then I did the stem stitch second, because I was worried that if I did the satin stitch into the same holes as my stem stitch was, that that dark thread would get buried and pulled in behind and not be visible. Um, but they're both, the results are both beautiful. And mm -hmm. so, um, the way that Paula suggests it, and she's got really good photos on the Facebook group is she put in her stem stitch first, mm -hmm. and then she put in a back stitch outline, um, within the satin stitch areas. And you really have to look at her photos, but she says it helps with crisper satin stitch. But the other thing that I really never thought about, but I really like the idea of it, is a little bit of padded satin stitch. Yes. My only concern, I really like padded satin stitch, as long as it doesn't hide your stem stitch, your dark brown. Um, I don't think I've seen her posts at all. I haven't been on social media that much the last few days. Okay. So I may have missed it. So it is in the Eliza Martha Lingfoot Stitch Long Group on Facebook, and the post date is August 20th. Okay. So if you look that up, you might be able to see that okay. there. And um, so I think that's a great idea. Well, that is. Yeah. So the one thing that I would really recommend for people who are worried about this step of the sampler is to do some test stitching. So whether it's in the margin of your sampler or on a scrap piece of fabric, um, just put in a couple of columns of the satin stitch, just mm -hmm. like that, and then um, put in your stem stitch or do it the other way and just see which you're happy were with the results of, which you enjoy better. I don't know, what do you think? I, well, I think that's a good idea. I Did I follow that rule? No. <laughs> I no. just jumped into it. Um, and I agree, you always try something before you, you know, you actually go into it so you like the results or you can change and tweak. So would I do it differently the next time? I'm not sure, but I think as I did more and more of the basket, I got better and better at it. And I'm sure you found that too. Yeah. Um, no. So if you're nervous at all, then just do some test stitching. That's always, yeah. I kind of think, a good rule of thumb. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say about that is we both stitched with the Swan 100 over 3, which yeah. is not a really good filler for satin stitch. Um, so we did both go back in and put in just an extra satin stitch here or there, like every third or fourth thread, I think we said, just to make it look a little bit fuller. I agree. It, it's very nice to work with, but it doesn't have that nice fullness that the regular Vera Soie, the Soie d'Alger has. Yeah. And yeah, I, I guess an alternative, and I never thought of this until now, if you do work with the 103 and you're working satin stitch, there's no reason why you can't substitute the Soie d'Alger for that satin stitch part in that, in that color. Yep. Yeah, it would give a different finish, but there, like you say, there's no reason it would. That you couldn't do that. Exactly. The, the other thing that occurred to me when I was writing my notes and thinking back to when I stitched this was um, 
just remember to take your time. I know it was the very last element of the sampler for me, and I was so close to that finish line that I just kind of motored through it, but maybe that's yep, not yeah. the best approach. Yep. I think I, I just hunkered down one evening and it's kind of like, leave me alone. Let me just work. And I'm getting <laughs> close and it's like, it's bedtime. And I said, you up. No, go to bed. I have to get this done. No, I could have left it till the next day, but I needed to get it done. Yeah. So anyways, it's been a fun journey. Yes. That was really a great sampler. I really enjoyed it. So um, thanks to everyone who joined in with us on yes. that. And um, we'll see what's coming down the pipes next. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, all of, everything that you need to submit your photo of your finished sampler for the drawing is below. Okay. So then we're going to talk about Esther Blackwood. Now, are you excited about this month's section or not? I have. I wanted to start it. And I thought, I, I really can't, but I, I am excited to the point where I have all my threads ready. So, and I'll show you why in a minute. So just, and this is getting a little dog ear, but that's okay. We are right here. Like, oh. woohoo. So we have a very little bit of border and this beautiful thatched cottage, which I'm excited to start. <laughs> Okay. And the reason I say I'm all ready is when I'm working something that has multiple colors, Berlin wool work, Biedermeyer samplers, anything, I don't like to thread and re-thread. It's, it's a time waste. So, we'll see. Thank you. So, you're probably familiar with these. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. You sell them. They this are is what the, I have. The Pacos, P-A-K-O. Exactly. Okay. And I haven't used it for a while, but I knew I was going to use this for that. So I've got all of the colors, or as best as I can see all of the colors, threaded on needles. And there's two ways. There's this little, I, I won't be able to get it out because it's tight. Uh, it has a cardboard thing, and I have actually put the numbers. Ah, yeah. You can do the symbols also, but there are some unique symbols that I thought I probably won't in that little box. It's hard. So that's what I did, and that's where I'll start. Hmm. And I'll show you. And no, I haven't put any stitches in yet. So <laughs> I, will, I will. You have incredible willpower. Well, I'm probably going to hear about it if I do. It's like, you're the leader. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So there is where I'm at. Oh, lovely. So, yeah, it looks, it looks good. And mm. yeah, I really loved, let me just bring it here. Last month, this little reef. Let me see. I can, oh, it's a little dark. Yeah. I'm gonna to have to scrunch it up even though I decided to press things. There we go, it's a little dark. It's pretty. But it's just so pretty. And that was one place I could have used my Paco. And uh, I kept on threading and unthreading and it's like, no, when I get to those other parts, I'm definitely gonna use my Paco threader. Um, so yeah, that cool. is Esther. Hmm. That's awesome. So that is month number nine already. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So four more installations of that. So mm -hmm. I'm getting a little excited about it. I better but, get busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could even do one of the neat motifs at the bottom. Yeah, I could. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. Well, thanks for that. You're welcome. Yeah, I really appreciate you leading us on that stitch along. That's awesome. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. so. I'm still stuck in the pub, so I'll show you my progress on that a little bit later. <laughs> I understand why. I've, I've been looking at it a little more, a little more, looking at the differences between DMC and silk floss. And it's like, Rose, you cannot, you cannot. So I've been just indulging from everybody else's. Okay. 
All right, well, I'll show that a little bit later so that everybody knows Sounds what good. it is that we're talking about. Sounds good. So the most exciting thing that's coming up in the shop is this weekend is the online needlework expo. Mm -hmm. So this is a virtual trade show for shops. And uh, the designers have been sending us preview emails like crazy. And um, so we've added a whole bunch of them to our website and we're taking advanced orders. So the link to that is also below. And um, Rose and I, we're going to talk about some of our favorites and I'll insert photos of those as well. And usually we pick exactly the same ones. So I tried to go a little bit of a different pathway this time, but I just did want to explain how the process is going to work at our shop. So there, I don't even know, there's got to be close to 100 designers that are exhibiting at Expo. And certainly we can't order from all of them. A um, couple charts here, a couple charts there. It's just not a feasible thing. So we have put the ones that we know we're going to have enough orders to make feasible on our website. And then also ones that we know that once Expo is over, we'll be able to bring in from our distributors. Mm -hmm. and not have an uh, arm and a leg in freight costs. So we're kind of trying to strike that balance there. So there are a lot of things that are released at Expo that we haven't put on the website. And so if you find something that you like that's not on our website, I encourage you to send us an email and um, probably odds are we'll be able to pick it up from one of our distributors down the road, um, but we just got to keep an eye on things. So that's the plan. So advanced orders of the things are welcome and recommended and sooner rather than later because Expo is on the weekend so I have to put my lists together. In particular I'd like people to focus on the international designers. So Primitive Hair, Manny Dudonna, MTV, um, so that we can be sure to order enough from them for the shipping from overseas. Makes sense. Yeah. So we look forward to people participating in that and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I get to go into everybody's virtual room on the weekend and have a visit with them and place my orders and just catch up and check in. So I'm going to have a great weekend. Boy, that I can't believe we're at that point already. We've been talking about Needlework Expo for months and now all of a sudden it's here. Yeah. Cool. yeah, we even actually have most of our plans in place for Nashville already, and that's not till the 1st of March. So that's, oh. that's how the planning ahead goes these days. So, all righty. So do you want to go first with your top choices? I was going to say you go first, but okay, no. fine. Well, I have two or three. I will try to limit it to that. There were some really good ones. So the first one that... I saw this when I, and it's totally different than what I normally like. It's Wild Flowers from Kathy Barrick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That one is a total wild card. Not my usual, but I really like it. Well, I can tell you that you're in good company because that has been one of the top pre-orders that we've had. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I shouldn't be surprised. Kathy Barrick out has a very unique, quirky, lovely aesthetic. Yeah. So... Yeah, I do like her. So while I'm saying that, the other one that's been very popular, and this makes a lot of sense, is her daughter's design company, which is Hello from Liz Matthews. So those have probably been our top two and then Teresa Kogut um, mm -hmm. for advance orders from our designers. Well that's funny that you should uh, bring up Teresa Kogut because I think am I going to mention that one or am I going to mention that one? Oh I've mentioned her already is it's called In Our Home. Mm -hmm. Unfamiliar? Familiar? Yeah uh, off the title it's not coming up but do you have a picture on your phone? I do. I can show it to you. Oh yeah, oh that's class. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's a classic Teresa Kogut one. So yeah. that one's really nice.
Uh, any, many, miny, mo. Let's go with the dressmaker's sampler. Is that on that's, your list? Yeah, that's on my list too. So that's oh. awesome. <laughs> okay, so maybe I should go because I was wondering about that. But yeah, I really do like that one. Yeah. So. Okay, so then what would be one more choice? Okay. Forest Path from Ink Circles. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Tracy, Tracy from Ink Circles really knocked it out of the park. I think this uh, is hers. One of her designs is second on my list. So still I you and I. <laughs> I know which That's one. Funny. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we will. Um, I'll insert photos of all of those. And uh, then, so my list, the first one was Heartstring Sampler's Dressmaker's Daughter. Mm -hmm. And so this is a um, an adaptation of an unfinished sampler that is in Beth's collection. And mm -hmm. so I can, how much fun would it be to imagine the missing bits of a sampler? So she did I a great job. She did. She really did. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. So a picture of that. And then uh, the second on my list was Ink Circles Star of Sumatra. That was, it was between the two. Yeah, which is, I think it's very cool. The biggest problem is that it is stitched with a new color of Gloriana silk thread, which Gloriana has been a little bit challenging over the past couple of years. So it is on order, but it it might be a handful of months before we can actually get it. Um, mm. But the color does the design so much justice that it yep. is definitely going to be something that is worth ordering and just hanging tight until it can happen. I, I agree. I happen to see that one on Facebook. And all of the Gloriana in in array, and then I brought it up close to the photo, and the colors in it are quite striking. Yeah. So when we see something like that come in for the shop, it's like, oh, rats, that's Gloriana. But then it's like, oh, Gloriana is so beautiful, and we'll just take yeah. what we can get. <laughs> it's well worth the wait. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So then the third one that really appealed to me, which is um, totally not my style, but is so stinking cute this year, is the Heart in Hand We Santa for 2022. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's super cute and would be so much fun to stitch. So that's my top three. For some reason, I knew you were going to say that last one. It just, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I noticed there wasn't as many reproduction samplers this time around. But there's some other really cute I, it's seasonal designs in that. But there are some amazing, amazing designs. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and lots to choose from. That's for sure. So, anyways. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks. I always enjoy playing that game with you. Yeah, I know. I know. I wanted to ask you what your choice was so that I, you know, it's like, no, let's just see. Let's just see. Yeah, so, good. Uh, All right. So um, the other thing that's happening with market is there's been a little bit of a challenge to design uh, some designs with cottage garden threads. And they're from Australia. So um, we have an order in with them for the threads that are called for in the designs that we're featuring. So that has to find its way all the way from Australia, but they're beautiful threads that we carry anyways. So that's really exciting. And I think that was all that I had to say about that. Okay. So in our last video, um, I had talked about this summer sale that we've been doing um, because I need to reorganize a couple of the storage rooms in the shop. And so I've been focusing on things that we have a little bit maybe extra stock of and that maybe haven't had a good feature. So I have a few more things that I want to show you to go along with that here. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that I have on my list 
is this pressing mat, felted wool pressing mat. So, and it's small, like it's the perfect travel, portable workshop, um, stitching nest kind of thing. And so it says on the back, press any pieced or embroidered block with ease. The density of this 100% felted wool mat absorbs seams and stitches, effectively pressing both sides at once. Block knitted projects as well by pinning them directly to the mat. The texture of the wool stops fabrics from shifting, so there's no distortion while pressing. Right. So that's what I brought them into the shop for, was for finishing smalls. Any little bit helps. <laughs> it, it really does. I yeah. have a larger one, and I've actually put my ironing board away because ah. of it. So I don't... I only pull it out for like, well, the wedding, I had to iron a shirt. So, you know, as I grumble, it's like, now I know why I have this wool mat and not an ironing board. So I recommend those to everybody. Cool. Good. All right. Then the next thing I have is this binder for recording your stitching projects. And this was released from Elegant Thread a little while ago. And inside it has some sheets where you can record all of the information about your designs. And you could also, after you've stitched a design, put it in a sheet protector and insert it into the binder so that you had the page on the front and then the chart in behind. Um, kind of, I keep my charts. So I think that, anyways. And then there are also, refill pages available for that too so it can just keep growing mm -hmm. um then we have a great collection of stacy nash waxers in the mm. shop so i brought these two to show they are strawberries that have a scissor fob dangle attachment to them um, and we have, this is a strawberry, and it's got a metal fining on the top, and then the lobster claw for a scissor fob. And we've got them in the natural wax color and also the red wax color. And they've got, I think they call it bloom on the wax, where it gets yeah. a little bit, so they always already look nice and antique. And the one thing about these things that I always think of is people in social media these days are doing such a great job of staging their pictures. Have you noticed that trend? Yes, yes. It puts me to shame. Me too. It's not my thing, but they have, they take a picture of what they've stitched and they've got these beautiful little accessories laying around and artfully staged. And so even if you're not going to use a waxer, which I wouldn't use these waxers, they're too pretty, that would be a really good use for them. So we've got a whole bunch of different stuff. Yeah. I remember when they came out three years ago, I think, and it's Stacy's daughter, I think, that makes them. T Taylor is her name uh -huh. and I thought, oh those are so nice and you weren't bringing them in at the time and and now I realize you do have them I might have to get one okay and well maybe we'll, get some staging <laughs> yeah we'll watch for that in your social media post to see if, <laughs> okay if it okay don't hold but your breath but there's yeah. a challenge for you okay <laughs> so a couple other things is we have these super cute little teeny tiny praiseworthy stitches kits. So I, I don't know who they have making these things, but this one, for example, is for a pendant necklace. Okay. And the pendant is even in the package. You can oh. see that there's fabric. So everything is in there, the linen and the pendant yeah. and everything in this teeny tiny little package. And that is kind of what they do. So this one is called uh, Bouton de Rose. Okay. And so it includes charts to do whatever letter of the alphabet you want to personalize. So that's there. And then this one is, this is actually a class that I took with them at a market. This is called a Sweetheart A Twee. And so it's got everything in there to make that. And they've tucked everything inside of this plastic card. So I don't know. They must have some kind of magic. Yeah. Gets all in there. So those are cool. And we've got a bunch of really unique little praiseworthy stitches kits like that in the shop. Yes. 
I've heard good things about their kits and mm -hmm. they come complete. Mm -hmm. And the ladies who are praiseworthy stitches are a couple of sweethearts too. So uh, happy to be able to share their stuff. Nice. And then the last thing for the summer sale parade that I have is from Sampler's Not Forgotten. And this was a kit that came out in Nashville so we, uh, a few years ago, so we only have a couple left. But it is to make this cute little pin cushion in top of a metal muck. So this is the size of the metal mug. So it's the, a mini tiny one. And in here, speaking of good kits, there's a waxer mm -hmm. and the linen, and it would be Weak Star Works hand dyed linen, I can tell. Some embellishment pins. Mm -hmm. And then in tucked inside is the ribbon. Mm. So that's so cool. Some of these things, sometimes I can't believe we still have them. Why hasn't somebody snatched them up? Because they're so so interesting and creative. And, and the nice thing with those smalls that you just showed, they are a real good palette cleanser in between big projects. And, you know, you can usually do them on the go or just in hand with your feet up instead of... Me personally, I can't put my feet up. I have a big scroll frame and a stand and I can't do that. But those things are just so nice. So I'd encourage everybody to have a small going. Maybe we should put a section on the website that's called palette cleansers. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yep. Okay, so that's it for that section. I am still going to keep adding things. I said every day, but it doesn't happen every day. So no. sometimes there's three or four things that hit in a day to make up for lost time. But yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So then before we talk about plans and mm -hmm. what we're stitching on, I do want to do this mini parade of hand-dyed linens that we actually have in stock um, because people... Sometimes people are willing to wait, but sometimes people want it now. So I'm going to show these off. And I have created a section on the website that's called Floss Tube Video Number 4 In Stock Linens. And so they're in stock at the time of filming. And we have at least a full yard of each of them in stock so people can order them and, you know, have a little bit of direction. Because hand dye linens is such an interesting beast these days. Um, and people oftentimes are willing to wait until exactly what they want is available, but sometimes you just want to start. So, so I'm going to go through this list and show them off and hopefully the video does a good job. Yep. So we have picked up the uh, Tabby Cat Linens from uh, France. Uh, mm -hmm. Michelle, who is um, a designer, but also doing hand dyed linens now. So I've got a couple of hers. This one is Creme Brulee. Mm -hmm. which is the one that Nicola shows um, in, she uses in a lot of her samplers and it can, it can run a little bit splotchy, mm -hmm. um, but it lends such a cool effect if that's what you're looking for to a sampler. So a pretty big yard of that. We have a couple yards of that, so it's available. And then this color is called Wood Smoke. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit green of a gray of a kind of color. This is 40 count as well. And I really like this color. And we have this in mind for a very, very special upcoming project that I can't tell you about yet, but it's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do really like it. And it's yeah. funny that you say it's a gray green. Um, it's it's hard to like you can't compare it reminds me a bit of putty but am i wrong on that more to the tin roof side of the week oh okay I mean, okay I, I would say okay. just off spec anyway so okay. we've got a couple yards of that in stock and mm -hmm. i'm showing you four to count but we do have 36 and 46 count as well mm -hmm. so those are tabby cat and then we finally got a shipment of hand dyed linen from color and cotton and most of it flew out the door just as fast as it arrived. But I do have a couple yards to show you here. This is called aged paper. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Nice, hey? Yeah. And so this piece is 36 count. I think there's still some 40 in the shop, but not a full yard. So I'm showing this one. 
Okay, also from Color and Cotton, which is, this is a beautiful color too. It's called Boardwalk. So it's kind of a little bit taupey maybe. Okay. But a light shade, Boardwalk. Okay. Uh, and then we got two shipments in the last month from Fox and Rabbit. Mm -hmm. So this is, one is called Hog Bristle. So it's a nice golden color with kind of a gray wash in behind almost. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this one I really like too. It's flannel flower. And so that's a little bit different than any of the other neutrals that I've really been showing in that it's a little bit more modeled and it's got the white as well as the gray area. Okay. Okay. Flannel flower. And baked clay. And so our picture on the website actually shows this as a much darker fabric than the dye lot that we have right now. But it is also a beautiful golden kind of a color. Um, mm -hmm. It might work for somebody who is waiting for vintage autumn gold from Lakeside Linens. It's not quite the same, but it has kind of the same ideas. I agree. I, there's a couple of fabrics I can think of that that would be a really good substitute for. Mm -hmm. so. A little bit more fox and rabbit. This one is called Up in the Attic. And this is 36 count. So it's, it's beautiful sampler color. It too. It's, it's showing good. up a little bit more muddy than it actually is, but and then this is Eureka, okay. also from Fox and Rabbit, and also 36 count. Very nice. Mm. And then I have a couple of seraphim linens, and I really like these. So all of the linens that I've shown you are hand dyed on the uh, Zweigart basis. So 36 count Edinburgh linen or 40 count Newcastle linen. So they're all the same quality of base fabric. And yeah. the company and the dyeing technique is what would differ. So this is prairie grass from Seraphim. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's gorgeous. Yummy and it feels so good. Yeah. And then this one is old stationery. Also um, from Seraphim. Yes. And it's a really nice yes. color too. So yeah, just look at how much fun would that be to stitch on? Oh, very much. So I'm filming at home again today, but I promise that these fabrics will go back to the shop tomorrow. <laughs> okay. They will not find their way into my stash closet. Maybe. She says with a grin. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, all right, so that was that. So I've created that section and I'll link it below um, for those fabrics that are in stock. And you might find that I add a couple others here or there, but I'll also be keeping an eye on them to take them back out of that in stock floss tube section as they sell out just to try to help people that need something a little bit quicker. And speaking of speed, um, my right hand person, Kathleen, is on holidays right now for a couple weeks. So I am trying to fill her shoes and I can do it, but not quite as expediently as she can do it. So um, our turnaround time is a little bit longer at the moment. But yeah. you, know, you know, Kathleen, you know how efficient she is. So it's hard to. Hugely. Stop. Hugely. All right, Rose. So what have you got on the books for the coming weeks? Um, and what are you stitching on right now? I want to see both at the same time. Oh, okay. Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm looking back and forth here. Um, when I'm not working on Esther, I am working on, oh, things are falling. Oh, here it is on uh, a Quaker sampler. And I know this is gonna sound like a broken record. I apologize. I tend to be a bit of a monogamous stitcher, especially when I get halfway and it's like, I need to see it to fruition. So this is unfortunately severely out of print. I've had this for a number of years. Okay. And 
I was trying to figure out, I was counting how many motifs I had left and blah, blah, blah. I should get this done by the end of September. So I'm hoping. Oh, and, that's where yeah. she can. and there are some ghosted motifs, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember, it is a lakeside linen. I think it's sand dune, 40 count sand dune, vintage sand dune. And oh, it's so much fun. If you don't have a Quaker sampler in your arsenal, I'd say find one you like. There are small ones, there are large ones. They're just so much fun to do. Mm -hmm. And oops, don't fall, don't fall. And the one that I'll pick up on the first is my mini Quaker mini, I'm calling it wrong. Mini floral. Mini bouquet sandals. Ah, right. There we go. I've got Quaker on the brain. <laughs> so we're up to September, this one right here, oh. which I don't have yet, but I'll show you my progress. And this is done 40 count vintage country mocha. And that's where she is. Hmm. And I think when we were talking about it last month, we were debating about whether the new one was strawberries or tomatoes on that vine. And it's tomatoes, right? Exactly. Yeah. As soon as I looked at it, I went, duh, why did I think they were strawberries? You could make them into strawberries, just elongate yeah. them. It's strawberry season, so why not? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And other than a couple of finishes of smalls, I shouldn't say more than a couple. I've got, I've got all of my Christmas ornaments for grandkids. They're all stitched, and now I have the process of fully finishing them. Hmm. Yeah. So you're gonna set that up in an assembly line and just melt yeah. them off that way? Do you think? Once, once I figure out what I'm actually going to do, and there is an idea that is put out by Vanna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitchers. Stitcher, pardon me, and she has this great tutorial. And I should actually show you so you kind of go, but show us, show us. So it is a design from heart to heart in hand. I always want to say heart to hand. And it's called Mary. And it's it is a free chart, but I'm not going to show it to you just in case you have to jump hoops to get to it. And I'll show you one of them. So that's the little finish. I showed this last month. So that is the little finish. She shows it as a package ornament and it is so ah, stinking cute. Yes. But here is my issue. I have to cut foam core board into pieces and you need about nine per stack. And I have 13 ornaments. You do the math. Uh -huh. So we'll see. Hmm. I've been All kind right. of... I've been stalling. So. Yeah. Well, wonder if you could find somebody who had a cutter or like a scrapbooker or somebody like that that could cut that many for you. I have thought of that. So mm -hmm. what I need to do first is just sit, not sit, but go into my craft room and just see how fast I can do one set and mm -hmm. see how I like them. I, mm -hmm. You know, I might be blowing it out of proportion. And... You know, if it takes me a couple of hours, great. Well, I have watched Vonna Pfeiffer's uh, video on that, uh, Twisted Stitcher. So um, I, and everybody should watch her videos if they're looking for finishing ideas. And also um, she publishes quite frequently in the Primitive, uh, the Punch Needle magazine with her finishing instructions. So definitely follow up with that too, if you want some some inspiration and some really good tips and tricks. And I've been finishing stuff for years and years and years, probably when Vano was still in diapers. But, and I say, but she has made it her job and she has the most creative ideas and I enjoy watching to get ideas and sometimes just to polish off an idea I already have. And there might be some extra little tweaking. It's like, oh, I never thought of that. That's a good idea. So yeah, yeah, I recommend her to anybody. Good, good. So, yeah. 
I need right. fall. I need fall to be stuck in my craft room. Mm -hmm. So I've got yeah. a lot of finishing. I've got, oh, I don't know how much finishing to do. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. All right. Well, do you and want to see this thing? I, I do. I do. So that is the Scarlet Letters, Peacock, Unicorn, and Badger. So I have the Peacock. I got the unicorn and the badger is going to be in this mound here, but I haven't really gotten very far. Okay. Oh, it is, it is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I, I think every time you show it, I drool a little more and I inch a little closer to getting the chart. <laughs> uh, I, I'd at least get the chart, right? That's a lesson we all know is at least get the chart because if it goes out of print or is suddenly not available, you want to make sure you at least have the chart. Uh, good point. Good point. I never thought of that. And the badger, oh, okay. That's why I don't pick up the badger. Yeah, he's just in that gold hill in the middle. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I might have to do that. I Last week, somebody was talking about it. There, there seems to be every third or fourth floss tuber talks about this one, so it's very popular. And so I did a little bit of research and looking a little more at it and the comparison between DMC and the Soie d'Alger. And I understand why you do Soie d'Alger. There is this DMC, I mean, there's nothing wrong with DMC at all, but I do see a little bit of a richness with the Soie d'Alger. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, you know, if one of these days you see it coming across uh, that I've purchased it, you'll know that I caved. Succumbed. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's been a lot of fun to stitch and um, I'm almost at the point where I can start the water, which I'm fairly excited about. So stay tuned. <laughs> How has it been with the dark green background now? Uh, from the dialogue perspective? Right, and, oh gosh, no, it's fantastic. So, and so you must be getting close to that water part then. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a mound across okay. the bottom here, and then another 20 stitches and I'll be able to start the water, which is satin stitch okay. under okay. there, and the little fishy motifs. Oh. Yeah, so this is 40 count lambs wool linen. I'm using Soie d'Alger, one strand for cross stitch over two. And I was a little bit worried about the background fabric showing through, but I, it's, it's very tapestry-like to me. It's turning out. Uh, yeah, a lot of people really object to that subtle showing. And I don't, I, I agree with you. I think sometimes that's the extra charm of, you know, if it shows subtly through, I don't see it personally. Yeah, so, so. that's really good. All right, and you're going camping again this weekend? Yeah, yeah. I um, the last few times that we've been camping, I actually haven't taken cross stitch. I do have smalls, but I've actually been sock knitting. So oh. hmm. that's been kind of fun. Hmm. Just well, needed a change. Fall is coming. Yes. Yeah. So, um, did I tell you about what I'm doing in two weeks here? No. So, um, you have a background in running. So, I am, we share this. I'm going to a Soyuz, which is in the, the south end of BC, to run a half marathon that is called Half Court. Oh, shut up. Oh, I so, am envious. Yeah, so Soyuz is BC wine country. So we started a winery and we run from winery to winery and have tastings at each one and some little appies. And we did about five years ago. And so now we're going to do it again. And so the vineyards in September are going to be amazing. And by the time we're, it's, it, it's not a full half, it's about 19 kilometers, but by the time we're partway through, we'll be sloshing from winery to winery. And <laughs> so yeah, uh, yes. we're gonna have a lot of fun. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little envious, uh, you know, <laughs> for those that don't know, I don't, I ran for 40 years and did a lot of stuff and injuries stopped me. So that's what I'm envious about. So, and, and happy for you. I will live vicariously through, uh, you're running. <laughs> so cool. I'll tell you all about it. Yeah. And um, then the only other thing really on my agenda is bringing in the garden. So I had the first beets from the garden for supper last night, and I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to a repeat again tonight. Mm -hmm. So yum, mm -hmm. yum. Yeah. yeah, we got some beans and peas and other vegetables from a friend on the weekend, and we've been eating fresh beans, and I've got fresh peas all ready to eat, and yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like fresh garden produce. No, no, makes it all worthwhile, that's for sure. Yep. All right, Rose. Well, thanks again for the visit. Thank you. It was good fun. to see you. It's good to see you too. Okay, and so maybe if you have to come pick up your uh, peacock, unicorn, and badger <laughs> chart in the shop, I'll see you in the next couple of weeks. Eh? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. All right. Well, have a good month. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.